Chapter 6 is all about lists. I think you're going to find once you get used to using lists, as particularly in Python, that it's going to be a great tool to use in your programming. It's going to really give you a lot of new options and it's going to make your programming code a lot easier once you get used to them. Let's think about reasons for using needing a list. One reason we're going to need a list is because in many of our programs we need to collect a large number of values. Think about the bowling scores program that we did back in chapter 4. You asked the user to enter many bowling scores. You could have entered only 3 or 4, but you might have entered 10, 20, 30, lots and lots of bowling scores. And maybe you want to keep track of all of them. We didn't keep track of them in our bowling scores program. We just got a sum so we could find the high and the low. But we didn't keep track of them. Many times we want to actually keep track of those numbers. And to do so with individual variables would get pretty unruly. Also, those number of values can be changed. So let's say that I'm going to always do 10 bowling scores. I could do 10 variables, and we could work with it. But what if those number of bowling scores is going to change? Sometimes 10, sometimes 20, sometimes 30. I don't want to declare 100 variables and then sometimes use 10 or 20. That really isn't very efficient programming. So a list is going to be uh, allow you to collect a large number of values and those value, the number of values we collect can change from run to run. It doesn't always have to be the same. It's going to be a very flexible way to program. What is a list? It is the fundamental mechanism in Python for collecting multiple values and just giving it one name so it's easy to access. It is a container that stores a collection of values which in programming we call elements. These values or elements are stored in sequential order. So the first one we put in will be first, then the second one. So it's not going to all get mixed up in a jumble. It, they are going to stay in sequential order of some sort all the time. The list can grow or shrink in size. We can add elements or we can take away elements. And the data or values that we store in a list can be of any data type. So you can have a list of integers. You can have a list of floats, a list of strings, you can have a list of Boolean variables, you can even have a list of lists. But whatever you store, all elements should be related. So if I'm going to store test scores, I should just store test scores only. I shouldn't mix it with names and test scores. Now Python will let you do that, but it's not very useful and you could get kind of mixed up and confused if you do that. So whenever you're creating a list, it should really just have one purpose to store one type of data for one single purpose. And don't try and mix it up. All elements should be related. A list is actually stored in the computer's memory. We can see kind of with this representation here that's from your textbook, this red box is the actual list. It's in the computer's memory. and we don't really care how the computer stores it, we just know that it's going to have this list of this many elements that I could add or subtract from. Its identifier or name is called values here in this example, but you can see that values isn't storing anything. There's no, no number or element next to values. It's pointing to this list, so the name is actually a reference to the list. This is going to be in the computer's memory, and the name that I give the list is a reference to it. That's pretty valuable information to know because I can use values as a parameter and it's going to point to this list no matter what. So I can actually change a list in a function. I don't have to pass, I can by just by passing in the identifier of the list, whatever happens in that function is going to change in the computer's memory. This is significant. It doesn't happen with any other variables. We'll just kind of think about that as we go throughout this chapter. How do you create a list in Python? Well, first of all, you have to give it a name or identifier. And just like any other kind of variable, it should be descriptive. You're going to use square brackets to um, indicate to the computer that this is a list and not a variable. So here are some examples. Here, the name of my list is test scores. I use the square brackets and inside I would list all the values. Now I still can add to this and I can remove from this, but this does set up a list. So it is a variable, a list variable, named test scores where the references test scores and these values would be stored in the computer's memory. 
most of the time when I start a list, I don't really have the values yet. I'm going to start a, I'm going to create an empty list. So I have the square brackets that's going to indicate an empty list, and I give it a name, and it's going to have a reference with just, and it's going to, the computer's going to set up a section in memory to store the list. It just doesn't have any elements yet. So remember, the equal sign is going to be in between. I have the variable name, equals, and I have the square brackets. So that's going to indicate that I'm creating a list. I'm going to add elements to the list by using the append method. Now this is a method. Remember what that means. A method uses dot notation. We did this with our finch robot, where our finch was the object. So we had finch dot and then whatever the method was. And of course I have to use parentheses. Here's some examples. My list is going to be the list object. So my list dot append is the method. And then in parentheses I pass in some argument. What am I going to append? I could append a literal value like 5, or I could append a value of a variable. As long as x already has a value, I can append it. So append is a method. I use the dot notation with my object. My list is my object because it's going to go in front. Each element in a list stays in the order that it was put in. It is sequential, although you can change the order. We're going to talk about that later. Even if you change the order, the list has an order to it. It's always going to be sequential. So each element is assigned an index, starting at 0 and going to 1 less than its length. Since it all has the same name, it's all called my list, but it has multiple values, how do I know which value I want to um, access? I'm going to do that with the index. The element can be accessed also by using the square bracket. So here's another way to use the square brackets. I use the square brackets to start um, a list, but I'm also going to use it to access an element. Here are some examples. Test score could be my list name, and then I have right next to it, there's no equal sign in between, I have the brackets right next to the name. This is referring to a, an element, and the index tells me which element. Zero is the first test score which is at index 0. We've kind of talked about this before, like when we're doing loops. A for loop starts at 0. That's the first iteration. So it's going to be like the same thing in our list. The first element is 0. Here I have my list 5. This is going to be the sixth element. And I'm actually assigning it the value 10. So I can do something like this. It's not going to happen that often, but you might want to do something like this. I'm using the square brackets right next to the list name, and that's meaning an element versus the list itself. Now here I'm taking the fourth element, and I'm assigning it to something. So you can kind of see I can use a list on either side of the equal sign, either to assign it a value or take its single value, just one value out of this whole list, and assign it to a different variable. So this line of code right here gives the fourth value of the list to the variable number. Let's try this in our code. Let's try accessing some of our elements. When you want to access every element in a list, it's called traversing a list. Traverse is like travel. If you can kind of think about it like that, traversing a list, traveling a list, I want to access each element in order because a list is sequential. So traversing means to access each element of a list in order, from the beginning to the end usually, or you can go in reverse order. There are two ways to traverse a list. You can do it by index, because you know that every element has an index, but you can also do it by element, which is kind of like a shortcut way. So, so this is the way I'm going to show you first, the by element. Here's an example of traversing a list by element. I'm going to use a for loop, but instead of trying to use a count or a range, I can simply say, for element, and this can be anything. You don't have to use the word element. This is a variable that represents each element. So it could be for value, for number, for anything. In my list, and this is the name of your list, I want to print element. So whatever I use here, like my counter, I would put right here. And it will simply go in order. It's going to give me a list going down. So to keep all the elements on a single line, you're going to add a comma. And that's going to be up to you. So far we have talked about one list method, and that is the append. There are several. We're going to take it slow and just introduce you to a couple of them at a time. 
So I'm only going to talk about one other list method at this for this program, and that's the sort method. Since it is a method, you will use the dot notation, and the list variable is going to be the object in front of the dot. It's going to keep all the elements in the list, but it will rearrange them in order from lowest to highest. So it's still going to be sequential. It's just not going to be in a kind of a randomish order, but it will be rearranged. Everything, every element will still have an index. That index is just going to change as it gets rearranged. This method does not have an argument or return a value. And here's an example. My list was my object dot sort, and I still have to have parentheses because it's a method, but no argument and no equals. It's not returning a value. Now let's talk about some list functions. So lists have methods, but they also have some functions which can work with a variety of different types of objects. A method only works with one type of object in the class that it's declared. And functions can work with multiple objects. So we have four functions here we're going to work with that work with other things besides lists. We're just going to apply them to lists. Remember that functions do not use dot notation. It's, we're going to call it like any other function. The function comes first. And then if there is an argument, it comes in parentheses. All these functions are going to have an argument, and that is the list itself. Here are some common list functions that we're going to use. Len, sum, max, and min. Len stands for the length. It's going, going to tell us how many elements or values are in the list. This is a really handy thing to know because our list length can change. Sometimes it might start out 10. If we remove some or if we add some, append them, then the length changes. So at any given time when you want to do something with that length, like a for loop because we're traversing the loop or we're accessing an, an item and we don't want to have go past, have the wrong index, knowing the length of a list is really important. So len is just short for length. that will tell us how many elements are in that. Remember, the index is always going to be one less. So if I have 10 elements, then my index is 0 to 9. Sum is going to take all the elements, assuming that it's some kind of a numeric value, and add them up. It's going to give us an automatic sum. We've done this in functions before where we just took all the values and we added them up. Now we don't have to do that. This one simple function call will give us the sum. Also we have max, it will tell us the highest value, and min will tell us the lowest value. We've done these kinds of things before, like for the bowling scores where we had to write a function to do it, and it's built in with lists.